just calling to say I...
the Matadors enter, looking to tame the bull that is Barcelona. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another round of the Simrig Sprint Series. My name is Nick Amon, and I want to welcome you to tonight's broadcast. Unfortunately, Kevin will not be joining us here tonight. He had had something come up that he had to take care of, so better he's there than here right now. But of course, I will still be here to guide you through the evening, but hopefully everybody is doing well. Drivers on track right now. They are out and about getting themselves ready for one hour, two mandatory stops this evening here at uh, a circuit we see quite a lot of. Uh, we see it a lot with Formula One testing, you see it in MotoGP, you see it in other uh, racing series, of course, the GT3, GT4s that'll run here. So this is a site that I think everybody is used to seeing, but it's always it always feels different with GT3s. I don't know what it is exactly, but every time I race here, it feels better. Sure, I've seen it before, but hey, I've seen Monza a hundred times, I've seen Spa a hundred times, I've seen Bathurst a hundred times, and I still love racing at them. But 16 turns, 4.6 kilometers, and it is raining, folks. There was rain in uh, some of the other divisions. Uh, I caught a little bit of one of the AP splits on Wednesday morning as I was uh, doing my starting cardio at the gym. So it was nice to watch. There was, there was some water on the track, but there was none coming out of the sky. So we'll see if this carries over into... Uh, the race itself, of course, practice was wet. You probably saw it during the uh, starting soon screen, and of course, you're seeing it here as we watch Dave Hasser mosey his way on through, and there is uh, Andrew Wilson parked up, or sorry, not Andrew Wilson, I, that is, uh, oh no, it was Andrew Wilson parked up on the side of the 91 uh, Golf McLaren. This session right now, going back and forth between the two bowls of the grid, Clifford and Lovering. Uh, Love Rink is on the back foot, which is surprising because normally he's uh, he's usually up at the front, but a quarter of a second is going to put him behind. But he is really trying to get back to the line now. Uh, drivers making some setup changes prior to uh, going out onto practice, and some having to do it again uh, prior to quali. And you wonder is uh, is there going to have to be a third instance of that? But we'll wait and see as Lovering retakes pole position. And it is immediately bested by this man right here, Ben Keo, in the 33 Aston Martin for Team Zaya. Very surprising. Three tenths over him and Clifford. And as I say that, Clifford decides that, uh, well, that's a, a great time, but his is going to be better. A 50.3 right now. Three quarters of a tenth. This is what is separating first and second love rink. Four tenths behind in the pits, though, making some setup adjustments, I assume. We have Kenneth Portis, who's just starting another lap. He has done a 50.85. He's going to pull off to the side, and then Landry sits nice and pretty in fifth position. He is uh, on an out lap right now, so we'll check back in with him. Austin Carpenter, 1.5, almost 1.6 back, but is starting to push a bit. Uh, actually, we'll jump forward a bit, because Craig Pocket, in the meantime, has found uh, quite a substantial amount of pace. Just about a second, so this should put him around Austin Shirley, and it does, up into P14. So the homebrew crew getting some marks up. Dave Hasser in the Send Nudes Craft Dinner Racing 9 at 21 Ferrari goes immediately into the top 10, and then it gets pushed down by uh, fellow competitor uh, Andrew Wilson, who goes fifth fastest. We check in. Jonathan Clifford is improving here. He's got a couple of tents under his belt. We'll see how he can handle Sector 3. Some drivers do struggle with this quite a lot, myself included. And, of course, this layout does have that final chicane. We don't have the uh, luxury, if you will, of going straight and taking a right. we got to take a right, and we got to take a left, and then we got to take another right as we... Uh, set up for the run to the line. This is four tenths. This is very quick. Right now, this will definitely dip into the 49s. How far is it going to go? Just under a .9. So Clifford extending his lead almost half a second 
to Keo Love Rink on the outlap. So we'll have to check back in, see where he ends up. Right now, though, Dan Fernandez in the 26th, sits 13th position. You can see Lloyd right behind him. Uh, Lloyd improving as well. Fernandez actually lost a couple tenths through those last few turns, and I think Lloyd might have just run wide. No, it's in the lines. It's 11th there for the Porsche. And as I say that, I believe... Was that Chris Frizza? That was Chris Frizza. That jumps into the top 10, pushes Hasser out of it. And Michael Landry, another driver who's uh, improving at the moment. Three ten It's hovering between 3 and 4 tenths, so this could be... Uh, another driver getting under a second uh, from pole position. Clifford, though, still very commanding. We still wait for Lovering to get back to the start line, so we will stick with Landry for a bit. We'll see what sort of times he can put up. There's a lot of improvements. I've seen a lot of green on the Delta from Rasco, Carpenter, Frizza, Hasser, Lloyd, uh, Fernandez, Wicks, Pocket, Shirley, Lopez. So a lot of drivers starting to improve uh, towards the tail end. The rain was tapering off a little bit, and it looks like it's going to do it again. But, uh, well, it's not really going to matter all that much. The track is wet. It's stayed wet. Nothing's going to change. And as we head up, Landry, half a second, crosses the line, goes into third. Love Rink falls down again. So the driver, Jean Lacy, is uh, lacking a little bit. But I think... I think he's just starting to warm up because his delta is looking immense and it just started. So we'll we'll see if he can overcome eight tenths of a second as we check in on Dan Fernandez down in 14th position, leading the amateur class though. He has uh, Darren Wicks's Audi to keep a little bit of space between himself and Hernandez. Lloyd there uh, also pushing. Oh, he's actually gone wide. No, he's gone back into the pit. So. This is a different, uh, this is the start of his flying lap. Fernandez from 12th, but then gets pushed back to 13th because somebody else decided that wasn't enough. Darren Wicks just misses out on the top 10 there. Just about a 10th, but still another two and a half, so we'll have another lap and a half or after this. Oh yeah, we are getting a lot of improvements right now. One such candidate, this man right here, Loverink, sliding a little bit out of the chicane. He has picked up quite a substantial margin. When I mentioned him earlier, the Delta, 0.5. And now, as he gets to the line, it's going to be one second straight to pole position for the 52. Two tenths of a second over fellow Lamborghini driver Clifford, who is not improving right now, has to find a miracle run either this lap or next if he wants a chance of taking pole position, but Lovering may give it one final shot. Ben Keough, provisional pole center not too long ago. Getting across the timing line, not going to be enough, though. He improves, builds a gap to Landry. The problem is Landry gets a little bit of improvement himself. It's still two tenths. Neither of them have moved whatsoever. Andrew Wilson, the 91 Golf Racing McLaren, still, I think, one of the best liveries on the grid. I'm a sucker for these kind of classic liveries, almost. And, uh, well, for him, the Delta's .8. Where does that put him from 8th position all the way up into the top 5? Easily sidestepping Rasco by 3 tenths, just about, but falling half a tenth behind Landry. Landry just improving, so... Uh, Wilson's gonna have one final shot to get this right. He's gonna use everything he can to make to make it right easier said than done Clifford starting his final lap Frizza from 12th to 8th almost a second and a half back but in the top 10 the one driver who's also got mega improvements from across the pond Tim Brook for satellite racing and I think he just dumped it he had a full second on his PB and you can see it there, bottom right, the best is still a 52-1. He just did a 51-1. You saw him run wide at the final corner. That's going to invalidate his lap, so he's lucky that he was able to get back in time. So that way he can start one final flying lap. We're seeing a lot of drivers back in the pits now. They are done with qualifying. Now it's just a case of waiting and see who comes out where. Landry. 
Once again, through the chicane, fourth position for the Canadian. Has a couple of tents. Could this be enough to put Keo down a spot? Keo is in the pit lane, but it's going to be two tents and then some change as he crosses the line, but it's not going to be enough. Barely improves on the personal best. He had the two tents he needed, but just stumbled a bit at the finish line. So, fourth spot, was looking third, maybe the race goes his way, and we do see a pretty big improvement. The next closest driver is Andrew Wilson from sixth to fifth. So he'll be happy about that one. Brian Rasko's lost a little bit of time out of the final corner, but will he find just a little bit something extra? No, he doesn't. Now, Jonathan Clifford, he's two tenths back, but he's got two tenths on the Delta, and he does go to provisional pole position, half a tenth. That is all the buffer he's going to get. Lloyd from 11th into the top 10, just behind him. Tim Brook, can he get this full second? He does have it. He's got to remember the last time he came around this corner. And he's going to be very, very conservative on it. But he will cross the line. Goes into the top 10. A huge leap for the Briton. So that is very good news for him. Kenneth Portis has a few tenths from 7th. Where does he go? He goes 6th fastest. And Lovering, I think, may have just bottled a little bit. Surely, 17th to 16th. Does Lovering have it in him? No, he doesn't. And for the first time, I think, this season, Lovering is not going to be on pole position. But it's not by much. It was half a tenth. This is not going to be easy. Not at all for Clifford. Clifford has not won a race yet. Every single driver has won a race. Or, sorry... I believe Lovering has won every single race except for one because he disconnected. So something outside of his control. But we are getting ready, and folks, you know exactly what that means. Now, I will say this now. I am not going to be here next week. I'll be out of town, so this will be the last grid walk of the season unless uh, someone from the AP or EU, or actually probably AP, uh, comes through and does a little bit of helping hand for NA, but if that isn't the case, and this will be the last time we get to look at these beautiful cars uh, before the break. Of course, we're already in the talks of Season 17 of the Sprint Series. And of course, uh, next week will be the driver's pick, and it looks like it is going to be the Red Bull ring. So, unfortunately, I won't be there for that, but hopefully the drivers and all you guys watching, if you have someone who does stream these races you watch, hopefully they give you a nice show. But looking through our starting 21, Jonathan Clifford besting Lovering for pole position, half a tenth. Can he keep that gap at least for the whole race? Of course, he wants a little bit more by the end of it, but we'll have to wait and see. Then it's Ben Keough. Was provisional pole, but had to get uh, bumped down just a little bit. And then it goes to Michael Landry in fourth position. Wilson rounding out the top five. Kenneth Portis misses out. Sixth position for the 84 Honda. Then it's going to be Rasco and Frizza next to each other on the fourth row of the grid. Austin Carpenter and Tim Brook will round out your top ten. Brook with a last second dive into the top ten. Then it's Andre Lloyd starting us off in the Porsche in 11th. Larry Lanham's going to be 12th position. Darren Wicks in the Tron Audi will line up 13th alongside fellow compatriot Dave Hasser. The two Canucks looking to make a little bit of noise here in a uh, United States dominated grid. Then it's Dan Fernandez, Austin Shirley, Jaden Hernandez. You see him right there in the 888 BMW. Beside him is the 713 of Craig Pocket. Enrique Lopez is going to be 19th. Mitch Sundorf will be our 20th place driver. And Edson Martinez, another back of the grid start for him but hey he's here that's what matters sometimes uh he makes some noise other times he sort of just runs his race and lets the pit stops do their thing you can hear the engines turned on that can only mean one thing we are under 30 seconds to go before we get this race started and while we wait of course a quick shout out to sim rigs for sponsoring season 16 of the sprint series out of melbourne australia 
These guys are the real deal when it comes to sim racing equipment. Wheels, pedals, gloves, and literally anything you can think to put on a rig. Well, these guys have got you covered. If you're from Australia, New Zealand, you guys are all set. Don't got to worry about nothing. But if you're like anybody else outside of those borders, if you send them an email, they'd be more than happy to do some business with you. And if you happen to be one of our Patreon members, you guys do get a little 5% discount code for supporting the organization directly. So do take advantage of that. Uh, sim racing equipment, not cheap by any means. I'm sure these drivers can tell you, especially some of these uh, higher level drivers, Jonathan Clifford and Sky Love Rank especially, uh, will give you sort of an earful about that. But thank you to Sim Rigs for sponsoring Season 17 of the Sprint Series. And as we go back out on track here, folks, this is the bridge. Drivers heading under. They are uh, well, getting ready. The pace lap always feels a little bit disconcerting. There's always a little bit of angst in the air. You never know what's going to happen. But it is certainly going to be a bit of work for this man right here. Skylar Lovering trying to gain another win here. Keo, same sort of campaign with Clifford. It's all on him. He's got to find a way to keep everybody behind him with two mandatory stops. A task easier said than done. question is, out of the two bowls, will the horns lock or will they make it together? We have two packs forming up. Usually we have one long stretch of cars, but everyone else being told to uh, hurry up and catch the grid. But we are two by two, some pretty sizable gaps here, so hopefully that gets sorted out. But we are getting towards the final chicane. And I believe the rest of the pack is going to be showing up here. Uh, Martinez in the pit lane did not hit drive. So he is going to be starting there. And he's got a lot of uh, work to do. As does this man right here, Jonathan Clifford. Round turn 16. Each lap 4.6 kilometers in length. One hour on the clock. Two mandatory stops. That pit window is going to be opening five minutes into the race. But, folks, we crawl across the line in the pouring rain. And it's green, green, green here at Barcelona. And it is going to be Clifford that gets an excellent start. Lovering has to go to the inside. There is going to be Keo on his left. Three wide almost as Landry trying to get a little bit of a run. But Clifford, heavy defense into turn number one. But is it going to work? Lovering makes a dive around the outside. There's contact between the Aston Martin of Keo and the McLaren of Landry. We have one of the Ferraris running wide, and that is Kenneth Portis in the background losing it, and he is going to end up taking out the same Ferrari. I believe that was Frizza, but already we are underway here, and things are just getting started, and we are having all sorts of chaos as we do see Keo off the road. I don't know if he was pushed or if he was assisted or if that was on his own, but he's going to lose a couple of spots here. Carpenter trying to find a little bit of an advantage there to capitalize on the mistake of the number 33, but he's not going to find it. Not as lucky as his fellow McLaren drivers, Landry and Wilson. We're heading towards the end of Sector 2. It ends at the end of the back straight. You can already see a gap starting to uh, form a little bit. Hernandez under attack from the Honda of Keo, or sorry, Portis rather. And just ahead of them is going to be, I'm fairly certain, Pocket. No, Pocket is way up the grid. He's up in the 12th position. Goes a little bit of a dash past Rasco. So, 12th position for the 713. That's going to be great as he runs wide along with Rasco. Tires not up to temp. Brakes not up to temp. The rain making it difficult. Frizza will gladly pick up a position. You can see Kenneth Portis still trapped behind. But starting to make moves on the inside of Hernandez. And he may have it. There's a huge dive on the inside there. I believe that is Lopez. Who goes for an exciting move. Actually gets the job done. And at the same time invites Portis in. And speaking of going in. We already have some drivers coming in. For the first pit stop. It's Shirley and Rasco. So I wonder 
if there actually isn't a pit window and we're just telling the guys, hey, do whatever you want, we don't care, come in whenever you'd like. Kenneth Portis again, inside, and I think he should have it inside to outside, the move is already done. Gonna join Andre Lloyd, he's got a couple of guys behind him, and both of them in some pretty scary looking machinery, it's Hasser and Fernandez. As Hasser runs wide, he just got around Fernandez not too long ago. But the 26 reaggresses down the inside. This is going to be side by side racing, but Hasser owns this corner. Oh, but Dan Fernandez, maybe a little bit of an over under, perhaps. It doesn't work, surprisingly. He had a pretty straight exit, but he is not going to be able to make the move stick. And just ahead, it's still Lloyd. If, if these guys continue to fight, Lloyd could pull away rather easily. But of course, we know Hasser is one of the uh, the most potent drivers here on the grid. And he is very much uh, ready to throw down the gauntlet if need be. Here's Darren Wicks leading the Ferrari of Frizza, if I'm not mistaken. It certainly seems like it. A lot of front end damage on that uh, Ferrari. That was That happened off camera. Darren Wick's really fighting this Audi right now. Everybody's fighting their cars because this track is not optimal and he does run wide. So Frizzle will say thank you very much. I will take this position and I will leave you to Pocket and Portis because they seem like they're quite hungry. And we'll see if, uh, if anyone comes in. Oh, Pocket, that was close. You saw just a little bit of a wiggle there. As he exited turn, or actually as he got into turn 16, but now he's going to be giving the slipstream over to the Honda of Portis. There is some front end damage. But can the McLaren have enough top end? Yes, it does. Portis, though, sneaks up the inside, just scares Pocket off his line. He'll take the position. That is 12th for the 84. And now it's the battle of the McLarens, two extremely talented drivers here in North America, of Wilson and Landry, and just up ahead, you do see Love Freak and Clifford. Look at the gap, it's only three tenths. You wonder if maybe Love Freak looked behind and sort of motion sideways goes Landry. No assistance needed for that one. As he drops the spot, we'll look at that again. From the onboard, he runs it wide. Oh, I think he got on the curb a little too early. Thankfully, doesn't take anybody with him. Gets back on the racing line. Let's Keo pass, but I don't think there was anybody else. Oh, actually, there was. It's Carpenter gaining a position as well. So, if you're Wilson, that's good news. You don't have to worry anymore, but if you're Carpenter, well, you don't get such a luxury. The race continues on. Mitch Suddendorf, Dave Hasser. This is 15th position being argued over. Hasser is going to be held up high, but he'll cut back on the inside. Suddendorf cannot defend. The 921 pushes on. Not the start that Frizza wanted, but, or sorry, Frizza Hasser wanted, but he is just going to do what he's got to do. He's going to work with the cards he is dealt. We check back in. Clifford, eight tenths of a second behind Lovering. So it seems like, despite the uh, pole position working in favor of the triple nine, hasn't been able to convert. Lovering got around turn one. Just too tight of a line. So it did him in. We're going to join Austin Carpenter here again. Battling with Landry. And I was going to comment on Keo having the uh, fastest lap of the session, but Lovering takes it with a 52.96. Keo did a 53.67. But then also, it was, or it was Wilson that had fastest, 53.41, and then Lovering came in with a 40, with a 52. So just a casual 52. Uh, if that doesn't show you how much of a threat he is, then I, I don't know what is. But you see Carpenter, Landry, and Lanham. Having to play uh, Peanut Gallery here. He's not really anywhere close. He's in no man's land right now. You can see Lloyd behind him. And just beyond that is going to be Dan Fernandez. Amateur driver in the top 10. And of course leading 
the uh, amateur class Hernandez down in 14th and Sunnendorf and Martinez 16th, 7th, or 16th and 18th respectively. So we'll see if the gap can close up. We have some close gaps within half a second from Wicks to Hernandez, Lovering to Clifford, Carpenter to Landry, but really no moves being done. Although, depending on how this goes... Oh, Landry. Oh, he did not get the 15th turn that he wanted. Lost so much time. But looking at the sectors from him and Carpenter, he was behind for most of it, so I'm surprised the gap was where it was. Maybe maybe that last corner is his, uh, is his kryptonite. He was only a tenth behind in Sector 3, but you wonder how much closer he would have been if it hadn't been for that little slide he did. But that gap goes up to 0.7. Keeping an eye on this, we'll check back in. Craig Pocket, 713. Right behind him is Darren Wicks, and right behind Darren Wicks is Hernandez. So this is uh, Jaden Hernandez. We'll run on board with him in the BMW. Uh, the gaps are exactly the same. It's about 0.7 between 12th and 13th, and 13th to 14th. I think Hernandez might be struggling a little bit. He is not really getting the traction that he wants and well nobody's gonna be getting a lot of traction in about 30 minutes because if you look at the weather in the top right of your screen you can see 10 minutes it'll taper off a little bit but 30 minutes the rain's gonna come back in force so we'll see how uh, how these drivers handle these conditions Keo retakes fastest lap with a 5260 so the Aston Martin in a sea of, uh, of struggle, seems to be floating pretty well on the surface. Yeah, he's got about two tenths back, but it doesn't really, or two and a half seconds back from first place, but, I mean, depending on how well the laps run, could he be challenging for the, the, the victory? I, I don't know. Definitely one of those, we'll have to wait and see type of deals. Andre Lloyd right now, eighth position. Fernandez has just been sitting there. He's gone back and forth, there's a bit of a Constantina, he's not really going anywhere. But at the very least, the thing he can take home knowing is that he is close enough to stick in Lloyd's mirror, and you wonder if a little bit of that psychological comes into play, just seeing someone, no matter what you do, stuck behind you, lap after lap after lap, can the Porsche be shook off his line, or will Nerves of Steel be his greatest strength here tonight? We still have 40, just about 50 minutes to go. Suddendorf coming into the pit lane now. So he'll be getting that first stop out of the way. He'll join Rasco and Shirley towards the back of the grid. But again, this is one less pit stop that he'll have to do. Now we can talk about pit strategy right now. Um, generally, drivers, if it's a one-stopper, they'll just split the race in half. Say it's a 60-minute, they'll do two 30s and go from there, but in these, uh, in these longer, or not longer, but then in, in these multiple stop type races, you tend to see a variety of strategies. Some people will do 320s, some people will do like a 15 and then a 35, if my math is correct. Some people will just do whatever they want. Um, it sort of depends. So we'll see what everybody ends up doing by the time the race is uh, over, as we do see Lanham Having a little bit of trouble running wide there. Clifford picking up fastest lap with a 52.23. Pardon that, that was my desk. Uh, his lap was three tenths quicker than Lovering. That is very surprising. And he's close enough for a slipstream. Three and a half tenths as Keo retaking the fastest lap of the race, a 51.90. Oh, and Lovering runs it a little bit too wide. That's gonna give Clifford all the invitation he needs, but he catches up at probably the worst time. And he does have to back off this turn. Long right-hander of three goes on forever, and it seems like it takes even longer in the rain. But Lovering's not gonna let that little bit of slip catch him out. He'll build the gap back up. Around turn four, heading to five. Clifford may be thinking about giving it everything he's got. You can see the slightly different lines despite being in the same machinery. 
you know there's setup differences, you know that there are break marker differences, shift points, turning points, everything these guys do is gonna be slightly different, but it's, it's sort of a chaos theory. These little changes will just change the complexity of the race ever so slightly, and we may see the apex of that by the end. This is the start of Sector 3. Clifford, a little bit braver on the brakes, a little bit later, catches up temporarily. We have them lap traffic ahead. Not certain who this looks like a McLaren. It might be Suddendorf, who didn't clear his pit stop. That's peculiar. I wonder what that's all about. But whatever the case may be, he is not doing too well. And oh, Clifford's going to blink first. He wants to try and undercut Loverink, so now, if Loverink is going to come in on this lap, it has to be one hell of a push. I mean, he's got to basically catch up to the guy in front of him and then pass him. If he wants a chance of coming out ahead of Loverink, so, or Clifford rather, so we'll put that on the back burner. We'll join Lanham and Fernandez. McLaren farther away now, he's not getting much of a slipstream. But that little bit of extra pace, that should help him at least close up enough as we head into turn number one, heavy braking zone. But of course, that break point's going to be pushed back. Land a little bit loose there out of turn number one. Turn number two doesn't look too good for either driver. But Fernandez sticking to the inside. Lanham sees this, covers it off. Fernandez modulating the throttle very well. Doesn't want to spin the car up, but wants to give it enough power just so that he can catch up another wiggle there for the Ferrari. And that will send him a bit wide. Can Fernandez find a gap? It's the question. Defensive line there from the number eight. Fernandez just going to follow. Opportunity might have been there. But he doesn't feel comfortable going for it yet, especially in the rain. You think how much different this race and how much different some of these moves could have been if the track were dry. That gap does grow. It's about 0 .6, 0 .7. Austin Carpenter, Michael Landry, two McLarens, or sorry, yeah, two McLarens still just in inseparable, it feels like, at this point. They do not want to stay away. They want to keep each other company. It's, it can get pretty lonely out there, so you got to give them some credit. We do see one of the uh, backmarker cars getting out of the way. That is the Porsche of Martinez doing a little bit of rallying. Not what you want to do here at Barcelona, but that's okay. Lovering's in the pit lane. Wilson as well. So we keep our eyes over to Clifford. Was this pit stop timed well enough? For Clifford to, uh, or sorry, for Lovering to rather not lose a position. As Portis comes in, pockets in the pit lane. But this is going to feel like an eternity. And I don't think Clifford's close enough. I really don't think that. Because this is this is fuel and tires. You can see some damage on the front of Pockets' car. I wonder what could happen there. And look behind there is the Honda. Coming into the pit stop, getting a little bit of service there from the team. Jonathan Clifford, here he goes. Now he is in the final turn. Where is Loverink? He's coming out of the pit lane. He's going to be ahead of pocket by just a little bit. But you can see the other charging bull of Clifford. He's going to clear pocket. And he's going to just catch up to Loverink. But here's the, the crucial difference. Clifford's tires... One lap older. So there's going to be slightly better performance out of them as he is releasing quite a lot. But Loverink has made this work. He stays ahead. And back to the duel these two go. This may be a race long battle that I would not be surprised come down to the final lap. So 42 minutes away though, there is plenty of time. There is Martinez offline and getting out of the line. 
as Frizza goes through. There is damage front and rear of that Ferrari. That thing has seen better days, certainly. But he is going to stay out on track. Uh, Martinez is coming in. He was off the road in a little part of the track that you're obviously not usually on. But he's uh, deciding to go in. Love Rink. Ooh, he's starting to get a little something here. Little slide, little slide. You can hear those back tires struggling for grip. And Clifford, the same story. Lovering's trying to push away, and Clifford's trying to pull him back in, and unfortunately, it's sort of messing both of them up. Through the chicane, out the other side, through 16. Just behind them. That's Wilson, but he is not even in the discussion. And look at that. Lovering pulling out a pretty sizable gap as we head over the line. Gonna be about almost a second, it looks like, as Hernandez comes into the pit lane. Uh, not the first of the amateurs, but the second of it. So leaves Suddendorf and Fernandez, the only two AM class drivers yet to pit. We'll check in with Lanham. He's having some uh, some work, but behind him, luckily, it is Lloyd. That's maybe going to be giving Fernandez a little bit of heat. He's going to force the McLaren to defend on the inside. Defending driver allowed one move. Does Lloyd play it perfectly? Yes, he does. Down the inside. And it is going to be side by side, but the Porsche pushes through. Lloyd played that perfectly. Forced the defensive line from the 26. Comes out ahead, barely. But I think now he should have that cemented in place. Yes, he does. Runs it a little bit wider. But that is A-OK -okay with him. That is position five. But... Back again comes Fernandez. A better line on the inside, side by side with these two. And the Porsche steps out. Frizza now in striking position with one slipstream. And then there's going to be another slipstream he can sit in. And as I say that, Fernandez figures maybe he should give the Porsche a little bit of a toe up this front straight. He does, but it's not going to matter because Lloyd backs out of that one. Frizza goes through into sixth position. And now... The 26 lies ahead of the 74. But the gap, you can see it. It's a bit more than uh, Frizzle to Lloyd. But nothing he can't overcome. Now, Dave Hasser is coming to the pits. That just leaves. Suddendorf Lopez. Frizza and actually everyone in the top eight that have yet to go for that first mandatory stop. Again, two stops tonight. Drivers have to change tires. We've had a couple of races in the past uh, this season that have had multiple stops, but it's just for fuel, just splash and dash. I mean, we've seen people stop, not even get up on the jacks and be let go, and it counts. Of course, this is all set by the, uh, the server owners. They can change it whenever they like, as long as they change it before the race. Now, speaking of changes... Look at the rain. 10 minutes is going to pick up and 30 minutes even more. Hopefully everybody's brought their umbrellas, their ponchos, anything, really, to try and stay dry. I mean, worst comes to worst, just get a trash bag, cut some holes in it, put it over your head. Oh, Keo's come into the pit, so... His best lap, a 51.8. What is the best lap? It's actually Andrew Wilson with a 53. Four or 51.34. That is lightning fast. That may be the lowest we see it for a good while. Yellow flag on track. I'm trying to see who that's the 135 of uh, Rasco having some problems there. Probably just got a little bit on the uh, a little bit on the grass. Uh, looks like he might have. This is turn four. Corner that I, I find myself sliding out of fairly regularly. I'm going to blame the car, not me. Because it could never be me, surely. <laughs> so he probably just got a little bit too eager on the throttle, spun the thing, and, well, that put him around. So that's not going to do him any good. But thankfully, he comes out ahead of, well, everyone he was already ahead of and didn't really lose any time all that much. So it's a little bit of a blemish, but nothing he can't handle. Lanham, getting a little slide there. That could set up Fernandez. For a bit, or not Fernandez, excuse me, there's a back mark behind him, another back marker, another McLaren, I believe that is Sundorf. 
but Fernandez with Frizza behind. Yeah, and there is, that is one of the back marker cars. That will have to be moved over, and well, that's a way to do it, but he still hasn't moved, I don't think. Oh, that out might, actually, that might be Fernandez. That is Fernandez, I am dumb. I completely forgot which car I was looking at. But Dan Fernandez, amateur class and fourth position right now just because of pit stops, but even still, you could just say, hey, I'm an amateur class driver. I was running up with the Pro-Ams and the Silver guys. And where are the rest of you? You're all behind me. So just Fernandez and uh, Suddendorf from Amateur that still have to clear the first of two pit stops. The other two guys have already done so. And it looks like Fernandez, he's ready to uh, come in, get a fresh set on his McLaren. He's got to be careful. That's, uh, I always feel like the pit in line is never really where you think it is. That is just me, Dave Hasser. This will be his final stop for the evening. And Michael Landry already well in the pits, so he'll be coming out soon enough. And once the drivers of Carpenter, Lanham, Frizza, and Wicks come in, we should be seeing Loverink and Clifford go back into those top two spots. Speaking of which, let's, uh, let's take a little bit of a gander. Why don't we? Uh, not at Darren Wicks, he gets around back marker. By these two, Loverink and Frizza, or Frizza Clifford, uh, gaps right now about three quarters of a second it looks like but uh, yeah, these two guys not really the gap we're used to seeing where I feel like every week we're kind of used to seeing these sort of Max Verstappen kind of gaps where everybody is fighting amongst themselves and it's only Loverink who's sitting comfortably doesn't really have to worry he's kind of just hot lapping uh, by the time the race actually concludes but right now it is Clifford giving him quite a run for his money looking on the inside but there's just not enough room the Lamborghini pretty wide it feels like and well it is going to be Loverink taking full advantage of that as he runs it a little wide Clifford's able to get the power down early but can he convert? No, he can't. Lifts, back of the throttle, mid-corner. Oh, and it's wide there. The, tr the 52 gets a little bit loose. He's going to make Clifford guess. But unfortunately, the guessing game pushes Clifford off the attack. Tries the over-under. It's not going to work. It's Lovering, a world-class showing of what it means to defend the position and keep the guy behind you from having any sort of fun as Clifford gets loose, dips onto the gravel, and into the chicane. You gotta wonder, what kind of thoughts are running through Clifford's heads right now? He is looking in the playbook. He's trying everything he can. But time and time again, Loverink has an answer. And it's starting to give Wilson a bit of a chance, actually, because Wilson's caught up. The gap has, has shrunk, surprisingly. What a great little battle from these guys. We do have Lopez, Wicks, Lanham in the pit lane, Fernandez, Hasser on their outlaps. Hasser the first to complete both stops this evening. Everybody else, Suddendorf, Frizza, Carpenter. Two stops remaining. Outside of that, everybody's got to do one more by the end of it. And we'll count Lopez as well because he, he'll be clearing his pit stop soon enough but man these it's starting to become almost a three pack right now because the rain is just pouring out there and it's going to be even worse in 10 minutes and then it's going to stay about the same 30 minutes after that so mother nature not really on anybody's side uh, unless maybe you're Clifford because this is probably the closest he's been to love rink in a while that wasn't just the race start I mean, these are drivers who we consistently see at the top, absolutely, but to be this close for this long, for this many laps, in an hour-long race, it seems almost unheard of sometimes. But Love Rink, unintentionally pulling Wilson into this, the McLaren driver who does have fastest lap with a 51, or 51.34, with all the battling the two ahead of him are doing, he is setting himself up for the opportunity 
to take one of these spots. This will be your top three once Carpenter and Frizza come in. And Clifford again, pinning earlier than his competition. This is going to be take two of the undercut. He tried it earlier. It didn't work. He just barely missed out on getting around Love Frank before turn number one. Is this the time? Does this finally work out for the triple nine? Love Rank seeing this, he may come in this lap or he may stay out a little bit. It is going to be a tough call, but not one that I think is too unusual for our uh, championship leader to decipher. Dan Fernandez, oh, big line there from Hasser, really pushing the Ferrari. He's not really battling anybody. Fernandez is a ninth. He's down an 18th. Behind him is 10th place Lloyd. And you can see the blue flags coming out, so he is uh, going to be told to move. But Lloyd is quite a ways back, so I'm sure he'll just uh, catch up, and then Dave will move over, and that'll be that. And Lloyd can set his sights again on uh, Dan Fernandez. But, I mean, Fernandez, I mean, look at the drivers he's ahead of. He's ahead of Lloyd. He's ahead of Lanham. Rasco, Wicks, Shirley, Pocket, Hasser. I mean, he is he is punching well above his weight. You know, not to, you know, discredit the guy at all. I mean, amateur is amateur, whatever, but I mean, when you look at the classifications, that's impressive. Absolutely phenomenal performance. And he's still got 30 minutes to go, so. He's just gotta keep the ship pointed in the right direction long enough. And almost on cue, Love Rink goes to the pit lane. If there's one thing he's been doing, it's been practicing those pit entries. That was perfect. I think he just got it slowed down by the time he got to the line. Anybody that doesn't know, the uh, both in-game and I believe in real life, the uh, speed is measured by the rear axle because I'm fairly certain that's where the sort of transponder is. So if you can figure out where you need to break, well, you're going to make your life a lot easier. And Love Rink, I think, has been uh, practicing quite a lot. So he's in the pits. And Clifford, if we take a look at the track map, he is just about a third of the way through Sector 3. You can see the 52 parked up in the pit lane. Now, how close can Clifford get? He was, I think, a couple car lengths back by the time... He caught up. Love Rink released. You can see Andrew Wilson coming through. And now Jonathan Clifford. Throttle is down. Firing through the gears. Across the line. Where is Love Rink? There he is. Right side of your screen. He's going to be on the inside. But this time, it's going to be a different story as Clifford. The undercut works out perfectly. And he will find himself ahead of the 52. Sure, he's only an 11th, but once everybody ahead of them cycles through the pits, this will be your 1 and 2. 29 minutes. Sits between us and the checkered flag, and Clifford has one hell of a task ahead of him. Love Rink, by all means, one of the best drivers here in the OOR in North America. And he is going to make the triple nine work for this win. From Sean Alacy Esports, the number 52 is going into a position that isn't all too common for him, but I'm sure he's more than happy to take the opportunity to experience it once more. Both of these guys have cleared their stops. It is racing from here on out. The only other driver that has cleared both stops is Hasser. Everybody has one pit stop remaining. Carpenter and Frizza. They are the outliers in this. So we are definitely going to be putting a bit of a thumbtack on these guys. Although they are really the only drivers that are actually close enough to uh, be in a sort of battle position. It's a little over 
half a second between them. We'll see what it looks like across the line. It has grown. Clifford picks up another three tenths, but here's the thing. Lovering's tires at some point are going to come up to temperature and pressure. And much like the tire pressure, the pressure for Clifford will also grow. But you'll wonder if it stabilizes. Frizz's coming into the pit lane now. Putting on that pit limiter well before the line. Pretty smart move. So Carpenter stays out in the lead. I suspect he'll come in on this lap. Uh, Frizza, I mean, if this is the undercut, this is going to be the undercut to end all undercuts, but you might have pulled the trigger too early if that's the case. Kia with fastest lap with a 51.03. So we are close to getting into the 50s, but if he's going to do it, he's got to do it now because that rain's going to just start pelting these drivers soon. Carpenter rumbling over the uh, sausage curb, though, and there behind him is Clifford and Lovering. Now, they are a lap down. Here's the thing. The pace of these guys, unless Carpenter comes in right now, they will be catching up to him, and when that happens, it could play into Lovering's favor because he may be able to use the 883 as a bit of a screen. Set up the pick, go for the move, get the job done. Carpenter may be feeling it a little bit. You saw the slide there. And just like that, in the pit lane, your race leader comes in. If you're Clifford, it's happy days. And if you're Love Rink, well, the rain is just gonna keep your parade from being fully realized as the gap grows. 1.2. Two. Has the tire strategy, has the setup strategy for Love Rink, has that played a hindrance? Is that a problem? Is that his Achilles heel in this race? Was something not set up properly? Because if that is what is happening, then it's just going to get worse from here. He'll be getting the, the, the treatment that he tends to give everybody else, which is either, you know, set up a six-second gap immediately after the first lap and then build off of that or just slowly pull away from second place. We'll have to wait and see, though. Like all humans, Clifford and Lovering, both able to make mistakes, but experience, confidence, determination, that's what's going to keep them pointed in the right direction. We're going to join Pocket here. This is the battle for 16th. You see Dave Hasser very wide there for the 713. And the Ferrari shows him the back of the hand and takes over position 16. No questions asked. Even had a coupon. Barely even had to try for it. Here's Landry Carpenter behind him. This is third position. Ooh, a little bit of a slide there for Landry Almost getting all out of sorts, but thankfully ties it down. The seas may be rough, but the drivers are tougher. On board. Oh, under the grass. Does go Landry. That's going to slow him down, but it's also going to slow down Carpenter because, well, you can't really account for the erratic movement. And rather than playing it safe, smart move there. Still 24 minutes to go. Despite that little hiccup, Landry, no problem at all, is more than happy to uh, get back on the saddle, get back out there. And continue to cultivate a gap. Speaking of gaps, Clifford. This man is opening up one incredible margin to love rank. 1.8 seconds. If we look on board... Look at this, this is usually, the roles are reversed here. This is usually what we're seeing out of Clifford's front window, not Loverink's. It's been week in and week out, these two drivers being swapped in the spots. But Clifford's getting his time in the sun, despite the rain here at Barcelona. But you know he is just going to soak it in if he can get to the end here. Now he is coming up on lap traffic. I believe that's Pocket ahead of him. It is. So does the 713 
get out of the way soon enough. It's not really the ideal spot. Oh, he's going to be holding him up a little bit. Nope, he's going to let him go. Oh, and Love Rink is off. Oh, Love Rink goes wide at the end of Sector 2. And now he's going to be even farther back. The front end of Pocket. Man, that McLaren is not looking too good. And I just realized the colors of the McLaren are very reminiscent of the Vodafone McLaren from yesteryear. And I got to say, I like that. That looks really nice. I think the red it should be a little bit brighter. But other than that, it looks... I mean, despite the, the hood being popped, it still looks great. But he comes into the pits. This is going to be probably a very long pit stop for him. Uh, tires and, and, and damage. He is not looking too hot. Let's see if we can... Uh... Oh, is the steering a little screwy? Or is that just... It might be. I think the steering is a little bit crooked. Because he's moving in a straight line at an angle, sure. But that, the steering wheel is just teetered a little bit to the side. Yeah, he is... Definitely having some performance issues there. Uh, Hernandez is coming in. Fernandez is in the pit lane as well. So these guys are going to be clearing their stops. And they'll be back out onto the racing surface soon enough. We're going to join Andrew Wilson, Ben Keo, as well in this uh, little spat for position, possibly. Keo still with that fastest lap of 5103. And look at the weather. Top right of your screen. 30 minutes. It is going to get heavier. And same thing with 10 minutes. So these drivers are going to be put in probably worse positions. So I think Keo may have safely secured fastest lap. Uh, track conditions, I mean, they're already wet. I don't think the surface can get any wetter unless you're talking uh, or an ocean. But we have the, uh, the ice caps to thank for that one. Or I guess lack of, depending on how you look at it. But anyways, uh... Yeah, we're, I don't think we'll see thunderstorm conditions. So that is one of the weather formats you could put in. But I highly, highly doubt that even this, the, the twisted minds of the OR higher-ups would do such a thing. Not saying they wouldn't. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but we do see uh, Lloyd, Lanham, Rasco, all coming into the pit lane. Rasco, oh boy, that was... Okay, that was a little bit of a, a love tap. He's flashing the headlights. I believe he's saying sorry. Because uh, Lanham was already slowed down. Lanham and Rasco, very good friends on and off track. So he's definitely just apologizing for that one, saying, my bad, dude, didn't mean it. Uh, you, just, you just surprised me. I uh, don't believe there's going to be any penalty for that. I'd be surprised. But Andre Lloyd, uh, between the two of them, He'll be getting service for the last time. And I think we have just about half the grid getting their final set of tires on. And everyone else will uh, have to do so. Lopez, one of them. The number 16 down in 18th spot. Pocket will be taking advantage of that. And there is Ben Keough. He steps into the pit lane, which leaves Wilson out on his own. So Wilson will inherit the lead of the race. Albeit temporarily. And the weather, I just noticed, very indecisive. Does it want to continue to rain harder in 10 minutes? Does it not? At least in 30 it is, but I don't know. It, it seems like Mother Nature just can't make her mind up. She may be having uh, one too many. She may have one of those. Oh, Lanham! Lanham! Whoa! Big moment there. At the end of the straight, what in the world happened there? So he comes out ahead of Rasco. And there's another McLaren. Oh, and Rasco gives him a tap. And well, that is physics for you. Just the inertia sending him wide. And and Rasco gives the position. That just shows you how good of a racer Rasco is, how mature of a driver he is. He made a mistake once going into the pit lane. He made contact with the rear, apologized for that by flashing his headlights, and then he unintentionally punts Lanham wide at turn number one, slows down enough, gives the position back. It's not what either of them wanted to happen. Sure, nobody wants to be pushed out of the way, and you know nobody wants to be shoving others out of the way to get position, but it's, it's great sportsmanship from Rasco. It really is. You got to applaud the guy. But for now, we, uh, we let them be as... Love Rink is uh, in a 
precarious spot because Keo has joined the party. This is probably going to be a very exciting moment for Keo. I can't think of a single time this season that I have said Ben Keo is fighting Love Rink for position. So clip that, put it in your little scrapbook because folks, it has happened. Love Rink continues to struggle. He is on the inside though, side by side as we head into the long back straight. This is gonna be the end of sector two, start of three. Clifford, in the meantime, pulling away, more than happy to take this. Hey, he's not getting a plane whatsoever. He's got two blue flagged cars between himself and Love Rink. And that is going to be perfect for him because those guys are going to have to move out of the way eventually for both of these two. But in the meantime, they will be slowing them down. There's Hernandez in the triple eight BMW and just ahead of them, I believe that's Hasser in the 921 Ferrari. It certainly looks like it. Oh, Keo. Keo does not get the last turn right, so he's going to lose more time. And Hernandez is just going to get out of the way. Let's off the throttle a little bit. So there you go, my friend. Have at it. Godspeed. And that's really all he can hope for at this point. And we see Andrew Wilson. And I believe right behind him is Pocket. Coming out of the pit lane. Not Pocket. 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 Excuse me. Sundorf. I don't know why I get those two mixed up. They both come out. This is obviously not a uh, run for position. And Larry Lanham with Brian Rasko despite the front end damage, has not really done all too much. I mean, it's a little bump, a little scratch here and there, but it really hasn't slowed him down. He's carried on. Rasko is fighting for position as he should. I'm surprised, to be honest, because you saw how far out into the gravel Lanham actually went. And Rasko, I, I would fully assume that he probably stopped or was moving at about 10 miles an hour. I mean, Lanham got right back facing towards the circuit. Picked a spot where he could, you know, get on the uh, tarmac immediately. Carried on, but now Slipstream being given over to the 13. To, to the car in position 13, rather. As we head into turn number one, Rasko's gonna make a little bit of a move to the inside. Lanham... I thought he was having a bit of a premonition there. He got a little bit loose, a little bit too much onto the curb. And that's all it takes. Rasko sidesteps, goes to the inside, the positions him, and this time he passes his friend. Not by a little love tap on the butt, but by a nice surgical little bit of driving after a mistake. And that is really all it takes here in the OR is one slight error, and you are going to drop your spot. It was only 12, but hey... It's a great move, nonetheless. And Rasko immediately runs wide. I cast her curse. I always forget. I always forget about caster curses. And then it happens. So, Rasko, sorry. Great fun. Great, great fun. But, uh, in the meanwhile, Wix comes into the pit lane. So he'll get his last stop cleared. That will leave Austin Shirley, who we haven't really talked about all that much. Uh, he's just quietly running his own race in 14th position. Uh, but that pit stop will probably put him back a good bit. So it just leaves Carpenter and Frizza. Jonathan Clifford. Look at where Love Rink is. That is a pretty sizable gap. That is, I believe, three seconds. If, if broadcast controller is to be believed... Jonathan Clifford currently holds a three-second gap over fellow Lamborghini driver Love Rink. Keo is sitting closely behind. He's not really going for moves. He hasn't had a chance in a while. You saw a couple laps ago, he just got a little bit out of shape. Coming out of turn 16, and well, at that point, the, uh, the opportunity was lost, but he is not one to give up that easily. Going to uh, call upon all of the experience that he has to try and take down the uh, infallible Love Rink. But maybe maybe the water is what it takes to get Love Rink to just step aside. Because he is just losing. He is bleeding time to uh, Clifford. 
Austin Shirley's in the pit, so that'll be his last stop. You can see a back marker Porsche. Fairly certain that was Martinez we just saw. Uh, yes, it is. And he'll just get back into line. No problems there. Andre Lloyd with uh, Austin Carpenter. Maybe a little bit of racing between the two of them. Carpenter, uh, your race leader at the moment. He's got to be careful because, well, Andre Lloyd... Even though he's a blue flag, oh, a little move there, a little bit of sideways drift in there for Carpenter, but Lloyd's got to be careful, Carpenter's got to be careful, both of these guys got to be on the ball with this. One tap could send Carpenter off, and for Lloyd, that's not what you want to do. You're not racing for position, but you don't want to ruin someone else's race. It doesn't really give you a fair thing to do. Check back in, Rasco and Lanham. Keeping close. And, uh, yeah, despite the move, Rasco hasn't really been able to walk away like we've seen some drivers, which is surprising. So, oh, Rasco! Big moment there for the McLaren. But at the same time, Lanham did the same thing it looked like in the background, so negligible. And he'll be happy with that. Let's check back in. Love Rink, Keo. Oh, Keo, he's so close. He can, he can smell the fumes coming out of the Lamborghini, and it smells like fear? Is that what is being wafted into the air? I'm not certain. Keo, incredibly solid, steady run. I mean, he's got fastest lap. We normally don't see that, because normally it's Lovering that has fastest lap, and he gets to, like, three laps into the race, and that's it. Frizza, speaking of in, is coming into the pit lane. So that'll promote these guys up one position each. Carpenter, the only driver out on the field. And he is just getting toward, he's about halfway through sector two right now. So Austin Carpenter, you are leading this race. Congratulations. Uh, wish you all the best, but we got to check back in, of course, with Lovering. Oh, little bit of a nibble. Keo. He saw, he, he, he felt the gap, he knew it was there. Love Rink did too. Now this is going to be tricky. Because Love Rink, he's not going to want to lose second place, we know that. But Keo doesn't really care, he wants second place. And he knows he can do it, he can be later on the brakes. I'm thinking Love Rink's setup is just not calculated properly, because he's been... Ever since that second pit stop, it's just been going downhill. I mean, sure, the first pit stop, he barely made it out ahead of uh, Clifford and was able to keep the gap pretty consistent. But now, it's not the case. I think the tire, I mean, I don't think it's the suspension. I don't think it's sort of the bump stop. I don't think it's aerodynamics. I don't know what it is, but whatever is causing the problems has just completely opened the wound right up. And there's nothing he can do besides defend from Keo for another nine and a half minutes, plus whatever lap is after that, if there is a lap. Depending on how quickly this guy, Jonathan Clifford, can uh, round the circuit. Austin Carpenter staying out. I think he's trying to sort of minimize how many positions he's actually going to lose. So if we look at the track map, you can see where he is, and you can see the triple nine of Clifford just getting towards turn one here at Barcelona. Yeah, I think I think Austin Carpenter is trying his best to see how much of a buffer he can put. Because he does lead Clifford by about 40 seconds, but I, oh, I can't remember how much I think it's like a minute you're losing in the pits overall. So, I don't know if, I think he, if he comes in now, I think he may come out, I want to say 6th or 7th. Well, that will be something we can, we can discuss when it happens. In the meantime, Lanham has gotten ahead of, uh, or no, hasn't gotten ahead of Rasko, excuse me. Rasko's actually starting to pull away by a good bit. It's been little chips here and there, but it has added up. Behind him is, uh, the 713 of Pocket, but he is down in 19th position. He's down three laps on your race leader. So he's not much of a threat. He's had a, a pretty tragic evening. But at the very least, the McLaren is looking uh, quite nice 
and Carpenter comes into the pit, so where does he come out? We know at the very least Clifford, Lovering, Keo, Wilson are going to get the position. It's Landry I'm a, I got a bit of a question mark on. So I'm not 100%. I think he will. It might be Portis. That makes me question whether or not he'll also be able to take advantage of that. But this man right here, the one behind, immediately will be taking over. It'll be soon a battle for second. And this one may go to the flag. Very much a possibility. If you're Jonathan Clifford, you look at the gap. It's it's not existently fast. It's not existently big. Not existently fast, just realize what I said. Jonathan Clifford has an absolutely ridiculous gap over Lovering, which doesn't happen. It has not happened once this season. If it ever happened at all, it was the race, I believe, at Monza, where Lovering had a DC for whatever reason, whatever happened. Rejoined, finished the race, got points. Now, coming into this, he was 147 points ahead. And when you take into account the uh, second place that he had um, in the rare in qualifying, he gained four points to the five that Clifford had, so it, be it becomes 146. But even with Clifford winning the race, it's not going to matter unless there is some absolutely horrible awful set of events that falls on love rink but uh well hopefully that doesn't happen and of course we still have that race next week at the red bull ring but if love rink can just stay where he's at and keep it relatively neat and tidy then he'll uh well we'll still keep that gap won't be as big, and there could be a chance if he doesn't show up that Clifford takes the championship, but knowing these two and the uh, attendance record, highly doubt it. And hopefully they've been practicing. I know the Red Bull ring is relatively new, and I don't know if anybody saw it, but uh, Nürburgring drops April 1st. That seems very ill-timed, but they have the trailer. I, I'm not saying Kunos would troll us like that, but I, I can't be, I wouldn't be surprised because it'd be April 1st. We'll have to wait and see, but we will be getting the Nürburgring. The full thing, if I'm not mistaken. If it's not the full thing, then it's going to at least be the Northern, like the Northern Loop. But if it's the, the Northern Loop plus the GP circuit, I think everybody's going to be happy. And then there's going to be a scramble to see which organization actually gets the first, uh, the first 24 hour on that one. And I'm sure the heads of the OR will definitely be trying their best to be the first. But again, that is going to be about... Uh, oh god, that's actually, that's actually relatively soon. That's going to be in a few weeks. That was closer than I thought. But we'll check in. Uh, that's Fernandez with... Uh, not Shirley. Is it Shirley? It is Shirley. Shirley down 16th position towards the tail end of the Pro-Am field. It's just Pocket that's uh, behind him. But he is staying up with Fernandez. Big shout out to Fernandez. I mean, this is an amateur class draft. I think, if memory serves, there has been a good handful of races this season that he's been in the top 10, or at least close to it, despite being amateur rated. You have Fernandez, the triple eight, down in 15, then it's Sundorf, then Martinez. But Fernandez, if he comes back next season, I will not be surprised if he gets put up into Pro-Am, because he is definitely Pro-Am material. But we are getting towards the uh, the end of the race here. Just about three and a half minutes to go. It's Clifford leading. Getting a bit of a slide there out of the final corner. You just see Lovering end of the frame before the camera pans down. There's Keo, there's Wilson. The gap, five and a half seconds. Lovering has never seen a gap of five and a half seconds that wasn't in his favor. This is the first time we're seeing it this season. And of course it happens right at the end. Keo, also being a bit of a wild card because he's got fastest slap, and usually that's Lovering's honor. But that 51-0-3 still stands. There is a chance that he could go into the 50 or into the 50s. Because the Delta, 
it, depending on, it just seems like it's either a tenth or it's not a tenth. But I think, I think he could do it. I think Keo, it might be last lap, he picks up the, uh, the coveted 150 here in the rain. And it's, I mean, it's going to continue pouring more and more 10 and 30 minutes out, but it's, it really doesn't matter. This is, it's the end of the race. We don't care about 10 minutes down the road or 30 minutes down the road. We care about two and a half minutes. And it has come to my attention that Lopez is first OR race. I, f I swear I saw him earlier this season, but if not, hey, good on him. 17th position ahead of Suddendorf Pocket Martinez in the silver. As far as I'm concerned, silver is sort of the um, undecided category. I know that the the gods of Sprint Series will, will dictate your path. Uh, oh, right now, hold on. A little bit of action here. Andre Lloyd, Brian Rasko. Rasko's gotten around Lanham and just, died, just gotten away. But here's the thing. You wonder if there's going to be a post-race penalty for the uh, punt. I feel like there might be at least 10 seconds because uh, that usually is what the uh, punishment is for incidents like that. But... Well, we'll have to see. We'll check the results next week. Around the back marker of the 458. That is Shirley. Lloyd and Rasco, they are just doing their thing. And Jonathan Clifford, this is the last lap of the race. He has to just... He's just got to keep it together. That's all he's got to do. Kia was completely fallen off of Love Rink. But he's gaining time on his personal best in the race. Is it possible that he gets into the 50s? It will have to be on this lap. Andre Lloyd goes a bit wide. That does invite Rasko down the inside. This is before the chicane, and that move is done. But it is sent a little bit too deep by the McLaren. Can Lloyd make it work around the outside? Side by side. One way back the other and Lloyd just steps out of it as Shirley gets a little bit loose there but Rasko now in 10th position and one lap to go here can he get the job done and Larry Lanham looks on in the background but we for the first time the second time rather this season will crown a different winner. Jonathan Clifford out of turn 16. He got pole position. He was behind Lovering, but he kept him within a second. And he picks up fastest lap with that 50.8. But can Keo spoil that party? Because he's got a hell of a run on this lap. He doesn't. Oh, he just missed out. But Clifford takes home the win ahead of Lovering. Keo gets onto the podium. Andrew Wilson in the top five. And I think he's just going to do a little bit of drift action. Oh, I thought it was going to work out perfectly. He's going to drift through turn one. Landry home in the top five. Austin Carpenter will be setting up in sixth position. And we've got a pretty big gap back to seventh. Portis. Wow, this is... I thought he was a lot closer than that. There's uh, Hernandez. As Wicks crosses in 13th. Hassers in 14th. Uh, Hernandez will be 15th, but Portis finds his way into the top 10. It's been a fairly consistent season for the Honda. I'm sure he's very happy that the, uh, well, the, the, the BOP has been removed because of the most recent patch. And we, 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 we use the same sort of BOP settings that LFM does, so we're waiting for them. Uh, we'll definitely have it for next season at the very least. Chris Frizza in 8th. Another great run from him. And Dan Fernandez, hold on, he's got Brian Rasko behind. Can Rasko get another one at the line? I don't think he can, but he's got the drive out of the final corner. He's going to just run it wide into the gravel. Fernandez, a great bit of defending. Forced the fellow McLaren the long way, and there was only so much road to go around. But Dan Fernandez in the top 10. There's Andre Lloyd, 11th. He'll miss out, but it was a great showing from him. And then it was Lanham Pocket, Sundorf, Wicks, Hasser, Martinez. Folks, that is it for us tonight here at Barcelona. Let's take a look at the final standings 
after all was said and done, but looking at qualifying, Clifford ahead of Love Rink by half a tenth. That is, I think, the closest pole position we have seen this season. But at the race end, it is Clifford picking up fastest lap on the final lap of the race. Love Rink is in second, Keels in third, Wilson Landry make up your top five. For the Pro-Ams, Lloyd, Lanham, Wicks, Hasser, Shirley, and Pocket. For the Amateurs, Fernandez, Hernandez, Suddendorf, and Martinez. And then the Amateur class, it is going to be Frizza and Lopez. Lopez having a, a bit of a rocky season, a rocky evening rather. But a great race, Clifford picking up the win. And a well-deserved one, some great fights there with Love Rink in the beginning and middle sections of this outing. But folks, that is it for us tonight. I am not going to be here next week, as I said at the start of the stream. I'm going to be out of town. So hopefully these drivers can have a good end of the season. I'm ready to see, maybe, uh, if I look at the standings, maybe we'll see someone else take the top spot. Um, but it's a pretty good gap for Love Rink. So a lot of work on Clifford's end, and a lot of luck is going to go into that. But before we get out of here, of course, one final shout-out to Sim Riggs, Melbourne, Australia, all of Australia, New Zealand. You guys are covered. Anything simulating you can think of, whether it be a wheel or a shifter or pedals or gloves or socks or shoes or whatever. They've got you covered. If you got a birthday coming up, maybe you got an anniversary, whatever it is, maybe you just got some money that's burning a hole in your pocket and you want to take advantage of that, well, you can. Uh, if you're outside of Australia, New Zealand, though, send them an email, explain your situation. I'm sure they'd be happy to work with you. And if you are supporting our organization by being a Patreon member, you guys are getting 5% off your in-store purchases, so do take advantage of that. I don't think I need to reiterate how expensive sim racing can be especially when you get into it but folks that is it for us tonight and for me unfortunately that's it for the season but don't worry i'll be back with season 17 for a new fresh batch of sprint races and i hope to see all of you guys there i'd like to give a quick shout out of course to my co-commentator who wasn't here tonight for personal reasons kevin parody even great and hopefully i do see you next season as well thank you of course to mullick and Glenn and everybody uh, working behind the scenes at the OR to make this thing possible. And of course, to you guys, everyone coming out every week, watching the races, whether you're watching them live here on Twitch and YouTube, or you're watching the VODs, whether it's North America or Asia Pacific, you guys are great. But I, on behalf of myself and everybody here at the OR, like, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure you like and subscribe, follow if you haven't already. You can join the Discord, get in on the action. If you're looking to do sprint but you're new, go through our... Uh, Feeder series, I believe, I believe we changed the name. It used to be Rookies, but we changed it. I can't remember exactly what it is, but sign up for that. Get ready for another season. And if you're already in the sprint, hopefully we see you again next time. But of, but of course, folks, as always, stay safe, stay beautiful, and we'll see you next time. your eyes.